At Direct Service Overhead, we know how much trust you put in the individuals who have the privilege of working on the components of your home. We understand that a broken garage door is the last thing you want to be worried about, and most of the time, doors break at the most inconvenient times. Our professionally trained technicians service 24 hours a day, and our high cycle parts are guaranteed to make a noticeable impact on your garage door without putting a damper on your wallet. If you're looking for need of assistance maintaining your current garage door, our team has the experience and expertise to deliver the results you deserve. Give Direct Service Overhead a call today or visit us online to learn more. All right, it's Friday. Thank you, Lord above. Ladies and gentlemen, the weekend. Right? Mm. I get a little sip of the water here. Let's do this. Three, two, one. Yo, what's going on, Hog fans? SEC fans everywhere. Welcome to the one and only. One and only SEC slash Razorback channel, the Pig Trail Network. Hope you guys have had a, a, a good week, a good week so far. I am wearing the beanie because, believe it or not, my house is like freezing cold. Uh, we did not adjust to the cold last night, and uh, in fact, we left our AC on. A little cold in the house, and this studio room is off kind of by, its, by itself. Not really well shaded, but I've got black curtains on the window here, so there's absolutely no sunlight, no heat. So this room is like really cold. So I, uh, if my wife is listening to this, her jaw probably hit the floor for me to admit that the house is actually cold. It's like, I don't know what the temperature was. Uh, I looked earlier, it was like 60, 62 or something. Yeah. So a little cold in here. It's a little bit nippy. I can take the beanie off though because uh, it's itchy and I don't like wearing them on streams. All right. I used to though. I used to. You OGs, you know what's up. I used to wear the beanie. I don't do it anymore. But now when I take it off, the hair is going to really be a mess, isn't it? Good morning, Ty. What's up, Shooter Race Gaming? Robert, Robert Ainsworth. How you doing, man? Yo, finally able to catch a live show. What's up, Chris? Chris Jones. Hope you're doing well. Grayson Reeser. Reeser? Still trying to decide... If being a hog fan is a blessing or a curse, LOL, who pig, Tunka Todd, slap that like button, uh, slap that like button in the, in the cross face crippler. Now nah, that one, I don't know. I don't know whose wrestling move that is. Uh, share like, like a boss and beat UAPB. That's right. Like the, uh, like the stream subscribe if you guys haven't already and, uh, check out all the links provided for you down below as always. Um, I know that it's UAPB. It's not exactly, uh, it's, 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 you know, hogs are riding a three game losing streak and they're looking to put that to a, they're, they're, they want to put an end to that bad boy. That's what they want to do. They want to just say, forget it. Enough is enough. We're going to, we're either going to roast UAPB. We're going to take out a lot of aggression on the golden lions, or we're just going to try and just stay healthy. And, and get out of this thing, uh, you know, with, with his, 
with, with a very limited amount of uh, of new bumps and bruises, right? So, of course, shout out to sponsors, uh, direct service overhead who operate out of central and northwest Arkansas. They will replace your garage door or repair it. Whatever you need, they're there for you. If you mention that the pig trail sent you, they're going to give you an, an additional 10% off. Just keep in mind, I know there's a lot of building going on here in Springdale. I mean, there's there's still... I thought it was really expensive to build homes right now and to get the uh, to get the the stuff needed to build homes was really because I, I remember the price of wood was ridiculous for a while. Has that come down? Is that is that down? Anyways, I'm sure if you've got a, a friend that uh, maybe they're a contractor or they're looking to build or whatever, reach out to these guys. Reach out to to uh, direct service overhead, and they'll take care of you. Again, mention that the pig trail sent you. They'll give you an additional ten percent off, and uh, yeah. All right. Um, also, State Apparel, who uh, who sell the softest shirts known to man. Known to man, okay? They're made right here in the f- beautiful state of Arkansas. They're located at, uh, at down at the uh, downtown Benton area. Uh, and if you, it's the same thing. You tell them Ty sent you, they'll give you 10% off. But if you guys, hey, for those of you who are going down to Little Rock Pine Bluff, there's your opportunity. Get uh get you get you some some shirts down there, but they are located in the downtown Benton area, and uh, check out all their merch there. They uh, they sell native and southern marsh clothing bands brands, so clothing brands. Ah, let's get another swig of the water. My week has been. Kind of uh, had some ups and downs this week. Um, we uh, we're swamped with with softball, as I told you guys. We're finally over it. Softball's done and over with. My six year old Adeline, her team won their uh, they won their their tournament their, their tournament champs. They finished on the season. They went nine and one in the regular season, and then they won. Uh, the second round because they got the bye. They got the first round bye. Then they won their second round. Then they won the uh, tournament championship last night. I know she's not watching this, but congrats to uh, to my six-year-old, Adeline. Congrats. That's her first trophy ever. She had a, a giant smile on her face. She and her friends had a blast last night. That was cool. I'm going to tell you, man, that softball, that machine pitch softball, those kids get into it, and so do the adults in the stands. It gets it can get a little chippy, but it was good stuff. All right, um, yeah, the down that was fun. That was the up. That was the good stuff. I've been kind of fighting off a stomach bug here the last. If you can't tell, I am didn't sleep much last night, and uh, I'm fighting off. I don't know what this is, but it sucks. You guys know me. I, I won't hide it. I'll tell you right now. This shit sucks, man. I don't know what's going on. Not feeling it. Almost not gonna lie, I almost canceled this today. I was like, oh, I'm not, I'm not doing this, but uh, decided to do it because uh, you know we gotta talk UAPB, and and I know you guys enjoy this stuff. I enjoy it too, and of course we have uh, Patreon supporters who uh, who who are a big reason why this happens. You guys, sponsors, you name it, and uh, but I very could have eased, very well could have not done this today. Not gonna lie, this is. Uh, I'm feeling it. Ooh. All right. Uh, really quick. I don't know if we talked about the – we did talk about LSU and their next coach. We talked about that on Friday. A lot of rumors going around about who their next coach is going to be. And, and remember, the names that came up according to Bet Online AG was Lane Kiffin, Luke Fickle, Billy Napier, Jimbo Fisher, which is I – don't, I don't see that happening. I know his AD is at LSU, the guy that brought him to Texas A&M. But uh, not going to happen. I just the odds of that are pretty extremely low. Uh, Bill O'Brien, Mark Stoops, Bob Stoops. Bob Stoops is not coming out of retirement to well, never say never. I guess James Franklin up at uh, Penn State. Joe Brady, Mel Tucker, Dave Aranda. Which I could see Dave Aranda. I think Billy Napier and Bill Aranda are or uh, Dave Aranda. Excuse me, are the two most likely. Urban Meyer and John Gruden. According to Bet Online, those were the uh, that's what's going on in Vegas. Uh, so, 
that's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see who they uh, who they pull because you know those fans they want a home run hire. They're LSU football. You get the right guy in there, they can win national titles. We know that. The last two guys did. Well, last three. So yeah, they've they've had. It seems like whoever comes and coaches them, they're gonna win. They're gonna win. You know, or they have a high chance of winning uh, at, a, at a very high level. And it seems like everyone that's there – now, Nick Saban, of course, ran off to the NFL, but Les Miles. Of course, that trended down towards the end of his career, and he moved on. And then, of course, um, Ed Orgeron, boy. It is kind of a wonder they didn't – well – I mean, it wasn't that long ago they won a national title. I mean, 2019, and he's already out the door. That just tells you the current landscape of college football, man. It's there is no, and of course you've got the other stuff going on with LSU as well. All the um, accusations, all the off-field af- accusations. Um, I'm sure that played a role. There were, and again, I don't know if this is verifiably true or not, but he was bringing women around games or something. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, we thought Bobby Petrino was, uh, was, was, uh, was brazen, right? Like who rides around as well of a known figure as he is, who rides around with a blonde who's not his wife on the back of a bike? I don't know. That's crazy. All right. Uh, also, so this game this weekend, I don't know if we're going to keep this show beyond 30 minutes. I'm, I'm kind of wrestling with probably ending it at the 30 minute mark, but we'll see. We'll see where we're at. We'll see how things are going. I'm going to get to chat here in just a second as well. Uh, but this game is pretty historic. It's the first in-state school to play the Razorbacks since 1944 uh, and, ha- and has over, and again, that's in football. Yeah, I said that in football and has and has over the last couple of decades won they have talking about UAPB have won over the last decades won three division championships including an overall SWAC championship in 2012 under Monty Coleman. So UAPB did I mean they were they were relevant in the FCS for a little while but now they're uh now they're not. Now they're riding a an ugly losing streak. They're not doing too well on either side of the ball. I watched I watched a little bit from uh, from earlier in the season, a couple of games. Uh, not the most high def videos you'll catch on YouTube, but they're there if you want to go watch them. I shared some links in our Discord. I didn't do a Discord question, like I said today. I, I almost did not do this today, but uh, didn't do a Discord question. But of course, I do want your scores. If you guys want to, those of you who are watching this after the fact. Uh, those of you who are here now live, if, if you want to drop your scores, I'm curious to see what you guys think. Uh, as for next week, I, I, I don't know how we're going to manage next week, to be honest with you. I, I think Monday, we're of course going to do our Monday show. We may just not do a Wednesday show. And then Friday, maybe we'll talk, we'll get caught up on basketball and, and, uh, and get kind of caught up on some of the AP top 25 matchups and maybe talk a little bit about maybe a little more about based on what we know through the week with Razorback football, kind of get caught up with what they're doing on their bye week. Hopefully not a lot uh, as they uh, want to lick their wounds. Some people refer to this as a double bye with UAPB. I, I don't know if I'm, I shouldn't, if I said that the other day, I'm wrong. I shouldn't have said that. It's not a, let's not call it that because you're still, you're still putting bodies on the, on the field. You're still, uh, this is a live, obviously it's a live game. There's still going to be the possible, you're, you're going to have the possibility of someone getting hurt, someone getting a little dinged up. I feel like, I feel like Sam's going to probably pull guys pretty quick. And, and you guys asked me about that on Wednesday. Some of you in chat were, were talking about it and, uh, or asking me about it. And I feel like if they get, a three or four score later. Let's say they go up 24 or 28, nothing. I, I think at that point they're probably going to put their backups in. Um, so we'll see what they do. I'm, I'm really hoping Malik Hornsby gets more than just a quarter of play tomorrow. Now I know too, you want to keep him healthy because QB two, especially with how physical KJ is and how often he's willing to run with the ball and, and do what he does. Uh, he, there's a likelihood he could get a little banged up. 
So we still need to take care of Malik. And for that reason, it wouldn't shock me at all if he didn't get to play a whole lot either. If it's a big enough lead, they may want to focus on the guys behind them. They may, they may want to keep Papa Jones happy, right? Put John Steven in, let him play in front of that Little Rock crowd. You know that's probably got to mean a little bit to uh, to his grandpa. Uh, so I, I it wouldn't shock me, again, if this thing gets completely out of control that we see nearly every quarterback on campus get an opportunity to play. I'm surprised no one's actually asked that question. How many different quarterbacks are we going to see? I think it wouldn't shock me at all if you see at least four, you know, uh, KJ, Hornsby, probably John Steven, and Coley, I think would be reasonable. Outside of that, I don't know if you'll see the Ole Miss transfer. I don't know if we'll see him play or not. Maybe if you want my opinion, and I hate to say this, and, and yeah, I want to keep Papa Jones happy, but I'd I'd kind of be okay with maybe focusing more on the guys that are that have a possible future. I hate to say that. I know it's being but I mean let's let's be honest. John Steven has been here for a minute. He's a senior, right? And I know he's technically eligible for another year. Um but I'd kind of like to see these other guys, these guys that are that are younger and, and I think will have a better opportunity to be on the field, you know, in the near future. John Steven is a capable backup quarterback, but like a third string quarterback. I mean, let's just be real. Uh hey Ty, what's up, Tony Brown? How you doing? Yeah, yeah, Eddie. What's up, Jenna? Yep, yep, Jenna, you were her pre K teacher over at Children's Nap. You know all about it. You know all about Adeline. She, uh, she, I was surprised she wanted to play because this year she did not want to, she, or, or last year she didn't want to play. So I really was surprised. Uh, quarterbacks, let them all play, says Mike. Uh, like to see Hornsby throw the ball. They need to get him comfortable in the offense. And I think something that we've all noticed, he doesn't, he just doesn't look comfortable. He looks nervous to me. He looks, you know, like he's kind of like deer in headlights when he's on the field. I want to get him comfortable. And why not? And I know it's just, you know, UAPB. We can go over all that and, and talk about, like, you know, what, what that really means in terms of the level of competition on the field. But you can't, you cannot underestimate the importance of just being out there against someone other than, you know, your scout D or third team D or whatever. And, and building your confidence up, even against teams like that. And I think Malik needs this probably, maybe even more than anybody, if you want my opinion. Maybe Hudson Henry, you could argue. I'd like to see Hudson Henry get some some reps. That's why he's on the thumbnail today. Um, I think he's getting, I think he's getting healed up. I think that's what's going on. And, and he's he's been dealing with injuries for the last two years. And uh, this year, he's he's. I think he's getting healthier and healthier, and and uh, and we're starting to see him implemented a little bit more. Trey Knox, I don't know what's up with Knox. He has that game where he kind of shows up, and then and then he and then he he doesn't. So I think he's a little banged up. Uh, but we talked about you know the guys that are banged up. Let's see, Dalton Wagner. They're going to be back for Mississippi State. So, um, maybe Knox is in that group. I don't know. I don't think Sam is updated us on on Knox has he I don't think he has so and there was someone else I feel like I'm forgetting I know we all know Catalan's out for the year oh Bishop and I, I don't know what's going on with Bishop either I don't know that we've been given a lot of information uh he is a junior I believe I'm pretty sure he's a senior right didn't he come in year one with Chad so that would be oh he could be a red shirt junior I guess I thought, he, I, regardless, I'm pretty sure he's a fourth year, so he'll come back. I think one way or another, he'll probably be back. Uh, just let Malik play the last three quarters of, of football so we can see what we got. Well, and I, I agree with that, but also they're going to want to rotate those younger guys out and keep Malik healthy. I don't know if they're going to want to play Malik for, for three quarters. I mean, I wouldn't mind it, but I just – I have a feeling they're going to want to play the younger guys too, you know, Lucas Coley and, and the Ole Miss transfer. Uh, yeah, Ty Mike Irwin on Ask Mike mentioned that Hudson was getting healthy. Yeah, he's getting healthier, and I haven't watched – I haven't watched Mike Irwin yet. He uh, he went off the other week about a memory he had 
going to an A&M game. I don't know if you guys caught that one. Or was it Texas? Anyways, he I swear, that story went on for like 20 minutes. Um, yeah, I think, I think it's key. I, mean, I think that's a good thing, Hudson Henry, who is injury prone. I think it's key that him and, and Malik Hornsby get their confidence up a little bit. I, I, I'm kind of wondering if, I mean, you know, we've, we've seen a lot of Blaine Toll, and, I, and you kind of wonder, even when Hudson was healthy, he was still fighting it out with, with Toll at that, or not, sorry, not Toll, uh, uh, Kern. Uh, he was fighting it out. And you wonder, too, like, is this going to be an opportunity where maybe he balls out and he gets his confidence up a little bit? They're going to need to build off whatever they do this weekend and carry it into their bye week, whatever they do. Uh, Malik just needs more live snaps without SEC monsters in his face. Uh, Tony Brown says, maybe it's just me, but I rarely see Hornsby throw the ball. All I see is him running the ball. He does a lot of running, and, and a lot of it, what we've seen is out of the RPO, and he's he's more willing to tuck it and run. Uh, it's kind of similar to what someone brought up about KJ Jefferson on, on first down. Like what is KJ doing on first downs? Is he just reading wrong and he's just he's reading run the whole way and he won't keep it himself or he won't he won't throw the ball downfield? I think it's kind of a mix of that. You know, but I think I wonder I kind of wonder a little bit if that's what's going on with Malik Hornsby. He just he wants to keep it and run with it. Uh, Arkansas Razorbacks official roster has John Steven listed as a redshirt junior. Okay. Well, like I said, he's a fourth year, so he will be back. Um, no, but I agree, Tony. I agree 110 percent, man. I don't. I don't know. I'm. I mean, he has. He's had opportunities, right? Like it's not like he hasn't seen the field one way or another. Um. So, he's he's had some time, you know, and and hopefully this week he gets a, he gets enough, right? Uh. Hogs drop 70 tomorrow, says Max. <laughs> you know, and this could be a weekend where they just blow them out, like put up 60 points. It wouldn't shock me. Take out a little aggression. KJ's a different kind of – well, he's, he's a more physical runner for sure. Malik is a uh, more finesse guy. Malik Hornsby is someone who can just – he just glides, man. It's like watching someone on ice skates. It's ridiculous. Hornsby is uh, is just a different kind of runner. You want to talk about someone who's, I don't know, we've, I don't know that Arkansas's really ever had someone like a Malik Hornsby, like someone who might be a legitimate four, three. Well, I mean, okay. Matt Jones, Matt Jones ran a four, three, but he was still, you're talking about a guy that was six, six, 240 pounds and dropped a four, three, eight at the NFL combine back in, when was that? Oh, four. That was, I mean, you talk about your jaw hitting the floor. That was incredible. Um, but yeah, I, I think you've not really had someone in this day and age in this modern era of era of, of college football in an offense that can actually utilize Malik Hornsby's set of skills. So yeah, I'd, I'd like to see him throw it more. I want to see him. I'd, I'd love to see him attempt like 15, 16 throws downfield. And maybe they'll dial him up and and they'll have designed pass plays set for him. But you know they're going to want to utilize his strength, which is his ability to run downfield. He could he could cover that guy can cover fifteen yards in in no time at all. Hey, the beanie is back. Yeah, Kelly, I told the story earlier about uh, we left. We didn't we didn't adjust for the heat or the uh, the the uh, we didn't adjust the heat last night. We kept the AC on, so we had this. It got down. I think it got down to like the low low fifties, high forties last night, and we kept the AC on. And the house is freezing, so I've got the beanie on. It came back out. But uh, it's nice to see you, Kel. Hope you're doing well. How many rushing yards tomorrow? That is a good question. Man, if they're under like 275, you'd probably be a little surprised, right? Depending on what they do with KJ and how long they keep him in. And here's the question, too. We talk about how many different quarterbacks are going to play. What about the running backs tomorrow? Like, it's been running back by committee. And I, I understand people's issue with that. There's been a couple of other uh, Razorback content creators and, and media people who, who've talked about this, about the, the the rotation of the backs and how it'd be just you know nice to settle on one or two guys. And I think there's a point to be made there, and I'm not going to 
I'm not going to fight anybody on that. It's it's an interesting debate. I would also argue you're eighth in the country in rushing offense, and it's keeping guys healthy. They've had zero. Oh, I better knock on wood. Where's the wood at? Hang on. Let me. They've had zero. I just messed my chair up. Zero injuries out of the backfield that we know of. I'm sure there's someone that's probably playing with some kind of – there's there's no such thing, and especially with how physical these guys practice, by the way. I don't know if you guys have caught Sam Pittman talking about that, but they are physical during their week of football or during their week of installs when they're getting ready for their next opponent. And all through fall camp, they talked about the physicality, you know, getting better in that department. And uh, – You remember how Sam was talking about picking up these short yardage situations? Well, you do that by being more physical up front, playing more physical. On both sides of the ball, though, they have. But the backs have been kept mostly healthy. And I think you have to give credit to the running back by committee approach. I get it. Like Dominic Johnson, who I've talked about it for weeks now, he deserves more carries. He's, I think he's going to get him. Sam talked about that on Monday. He, he mentioned Dominic Johnson. Like, why aren't we getting Dom the ball more? Dom John, as I call him in our Discord. Uh, he deserves more carries. So that's the question is, what's that rotation look like this week and who gets more care? I, I kind of wonder because A.J. Green, his role is starting to diminish a little bit in this offense. Let's not kid ourselves. I mean, he's, he's not – I figured he would be somewhere around – nine carries a game at this point and he's he's below that he's pretty well I think he's at like four carries a game or something like it's, it's like half that production and uh I I wonder if we see more of him because clearly yeah he's got an he's he's had some issues dropping the ball on on kick return and fumbling the ball when he's uh you know coming out of the backfield on offense he's fumbled it well just once I think right um, maybe, maybe twice, no once because Trey Knox turned around and recovered the fumble, but, um, I might be getting them mixed up. I apologize. But yeah, I, I wonder too, do we see, maybe we see some of the other guys, Oglesby or, or, um, uh, Javion Hunt. If, if you see them in the, you know, get more carries than normal. I don't, that's, that's, you know, that's going to be an area to keep an eye on. Tight end, you know what they're going to do. They're probably still going to rotate Blake Kern and Hudson Henry. You might see the walk on. I don't know that we see Knox. I don't know what the deal is with Knox. Uh, I want to see more Dominic tomorrow. That dude is a problem. Just runs through tackles like KJ says Kelly Murray. You know what else he does? Well, I mean, yeah, he runs through. You're right. He runs through tackles. But he falls forward and I was talking to my neighbor Alex about this. Oh, Cricks in our Discord. I was talking to him. I said he just falls forward for two, three yards. Not only does he punch through and run through tackles, but then he's like, I'm just going to hold on to the ball and just fall forward. Like He's just I, I, he's good at it, man. He uses a lot of that forward momentum, and he just, he just falls forward. And, and I don't know why they're not giving it to him on those fourth and short situations when you want to run the ball and you're giving it to Traylon. Like – the scattiest of scat backs, well, I mean, in this offense or among these backs, you know, m- most of these guys are a little bigger. Um, not, let's see, not a lot to discuss when Vegas has a spread at 51. <laughs> How about those two basketball five stars? <laughs> yeah, spreads at 51 according to Vegas. ESPN doesn't even have it up. I was looking at that. They don't even have the spread. They don't have anything unless they're just – not unless the site's having issues. All that I can get to load is the uh, where they're playing at, the time, the date, the coverage, and then the uh, the ESPN football power index, which favors Arkansas at ninety nine point eight percent. So, yeah, the rotation on offense is going to be interesting to see. It's also going to be I'm, I'm curious to see what they do too on defense. What younger defensive linemen we haven't seen? Do we get to see Cameron Ball tomorrow? Uh, do we get a maybe we get a chance to see Miller out of Warren, who's what a redshirt sophomore at this point? Maybe we get to see him play. We get to see some of these younger defensive linemen get an opportunity. By the way, I, I think UAPB, who is by the way terrible, one in five, riding a losing streak. What is it? Five game, yeah, five game losing streak. 
They lost to Central Arkansas 45-23. So they're already 0-1 in the state. Um, they like to switch at quarterback, too. I don't know if you guys – for those of you who got an opportunity to watch them play, but they'll play a couple different guys, uh, Xavier Vaughn and, and Skylar Perry. Um, you know, and, and both of them are – I mean, they're capable quarterbacks just at that level, right, at the FCS level. But – not a lot going on with UAPB. I mean, they're just, like I said, they are really bad um, on a level that's just kind of difficult to talk about. They do have a win, right? I mean, they got a win. They're doing something. Skyler, uh, Skyler Perry on the year, 75, or he's, he's 75 of 162 passes uh, for 827 yards. That's a completion rate sub 47%. Two touchdowns, four picks. Xavier Vaughn, 21 of 39, 358 yards. He's just north of 50% at 53. He's got three three touchdowns, two picks. Those two have been sacked combined seven times this year through six or through seven games, right? Is that where they're at? Uh, Kier Crossley and Kavion Britton have been their two guys that have carried the ball most this year. Crossley at 59 carries. He's averaging north of four yards a carry. Both these guys are averaging about four yards a carry. Crossley has a 61-yarder from the line of scrimmage, five touchdowns. Uh, Britton has a, a one touchdown. Then their other, uh, their Xavion, or Xavier Vaughn, excuse me, has a rushing touchdown as well. Uh, Vaughn on the year is kind of a guy that he doesn't mind. He'll tuck it and run. 19 carries, 62 yards. Again, with that rushing touchdown. No receivers over 20 catches. Josh uh, Josh Wilkes has 19 catches, 299 yards with two touchdowns. But, yeah, they're 1-5 um, and five in the slack in the West. Arkansas favorite, at, I think it's 51, what Vegas was saying. So, uh, I don't, other than that, in the ESPN FPI, I don't have much more for you on that. I can tell you. What they do on offense, uh, UAPB ranks 88th in the FCS in total offense. They average 324 yards per game. They're the 78th overall uh, scoring offense, 120, 126 yards on the ground with 197 yards through the air on average, which uh, that puts them right at about 69th in the FCS. Um, yeah. They're they're bad when you're that bottom when you're on the bottom of the FCS totem pole like that. Not a not a great sign. So, yeah, give me your scores and then tell me if you think they it, tell me if you think Arkansas really hangs if they really beat these guys by fifty one points. That's that is a tough spread to buy, man. I, I, you know, and I'm not a gambler and I'll tell you guys whether or not I, I think they can beat spreads or whatever, or what they can do against the spread. But like I said, they are one in five. They're not very good. You also have to think of it like this though. This to them is their Super Bowl. This is their opportunity to play in war memorial. Uh, in not really, I mean, it, it feels probably more like their home turf in a way. You know, Arkansas doesn't play in Little Rock as often now. They're they're there one every two years. So it probably feels less and less like home, like another play. Even though you're going to have 90% of the fans, 95% of the fans are going to be Hog fans, certainly you're going to have home field advantage for sure. But for UAPB, man, I mean, this is – this probably also kind of feels like their home turf too. Even though the fans, it's going to be 90% Hog fans. Uh, and you know there's going to be Hog fans that also kind of want to see Pine Bluff – at least not get embarrassed. And I, I'm kind of in that group. I, I, I really like, and I love that we're doing this, by the way. I, I don't have a problem keeping the money in the state at all. And we know that Frank Broyles didn't want to do this with Arkansas State, which is happening, you know, when I'm like 48 years old. But um, Frank's reasoning was something something about Florida and Florida State, I think, is what he was quoted as talking about back in the day and seeing how that affected when Florida started playing Florida State and then kind of what happened. The two fed off each other. But Arkansas doesn't have half the population the state of Florida has. It's not the recruiting hotbed that Florida is. 
I have no problem with with playing and I, I have no problem. I wish they'd play state this year. I'd love to mud stomp them. I, I'd do it in front of their fans. We'll play it there. I'd love to mud stomp Arkansas State. Remember those fans? You remember how how arrogant they were? Oh, we can't let that happen. When Arkansas was so bad the last year under Brett and then the last two years with Chad. Oh, we could beat Arkansas. But they weren't wrong. They hell, they probably could have. Chad Morris was a what it was the Chad Morris era was terrible. But I have no problem playing these games. And I am kind of like, you know, I I don't know. I guess it's because we're so new to playing these these in state teams that you don't want to embarrass them. You know, it is Arkansas. These are our peoples, okay? These are our peoples. But having said that, of course, you want Arkansas to blow out everybody. You want them to win by 45, 50 points every week. But, uh, you know, I remember opening up the paper in high school. Me and a buddy of mine, Brandon, we'd always bring our sports page and we'd open it up. We'd always keep an eye on what the, you know, like UCA and some of these other schools would do, the in-state schools. Arkansas State even at the time before we realized how much we hate them. Arkansas State, they are the uh, exemption to that rule. I could care less about Arkansas State. But UAPB and UCA. So, and I like UCA's mascot and I love their colors. Maybe that's the Fayetteville bias in me, the purple and black. (laughs) So, 51, do they do it? Does Arkansas hang 51 points on these guys? Or, well, do they beat them by 51? I don't even know that I want to give a score on this game because I have no idea (laughs) I feel like they ought to win. It wouldn't surprise me if they hang 60. You know, Sam Pittman and this staff and, and this roster, these players are probably going to look at this like, all right, well, they're our enemy this weekend. We don't care that they're down. We don't care that they're FCS. We're going to go out there and take care of business. But there's also the other side to this where you want to keep everybody healthy and you may not be as aggressive. So you got to keep that into consideration. And also UAPB for them, this is this is their this is their Super Bowl. This is their opportunity to play in Little Rock, to play the Razorbacks for the first time since right after freaking World War II. Pretty sure the vast majority of my chat, I would, I'm willing to say probably 100% of you, <laughs> were not alive. Um, we're not born yet. The last time we played an in-state school in, in football. So, yeah. And their defense is bad too. They will try to blitz. They they can be pretty aggressive on defense. There's no doubt. They they'll try and bring all kinds of pressure. Uh, they they'll line up out of a forefront and they'll they'll bring five. They will do it. Uh, for real this time, Hogs by ninety, sixty two to six. But I wouldn't I wouldn't put money on that spread. Uh, in front of their fans, question mark, laugh out loud. Their fans don't, right. But uh, Kelly, I mean, what I'm saying is it's, there's probably going to be some people there that are rooting for UAPB. This is closer to Pine Bluff than Fayetteville is. Uh, why are you wearing the beanie on your head? Are you cold? See this, you see why I quit wearing the beanie like several years ago? I don't know why people have such an interest in the beanie. I don't understand it. Yes, Leslie, the house is cold. It is. The house is cold. Uh, did anyone see what happened to former Hog Seals? I heard about it. I heard he's uh, – but it's it's a minimal injury. And I, I think he's going to be back in, in within the week. Uh, you got to remember the year we played Alcorn State. It was pretty tough. Right. I don't think Pittman is going to run up the score on UAPB. I think if we – if we get a good lead, then the twos and threes finish the game, and then scoring won't be as easy at that point. Right, I agree with that. Talk to me, Ty, live outside of Jonesboro, wearing my hog gear every time Every time I go. We'll pick Suey. Um, Nathan Lair says 62-7. to seven. Dialed up, 10-32, says 47-10. to 10. Tony Brown, 51-17. I can see that. I could see 51 to like 10, 13, something like that. 42 nothing at half, says Alex. That's funny. Uh, the spread's getting beat, says DJ Cold World. Uh-oh. Oh, snap. Get a hog beanie and everyone will love it. No, I want to wear my black beanie, Mr. Bloodline. Don't tell me what to do. 
Uh, Stubbs Cup Series dot com fifty two to nothing. Big Donnelly sixty to seven. I I feel like what it's going to end up being it's it's probably going to be something I don't know fifty fifty two to thirteen something like that. Yeah, I'll say fifty two to thirteen. Let me write that down. That's my score. That's my pick. Fifty two to thirteen. Thus, not not getting past the spread. And the reason why I think that they don't, why they don't beat that Vegas spread is because, number one, that's, that's a massive spread. And I don't typically, like when it gets beyond, I don't care who you are, when it gets beyond like 25, 26 points, I get a little more, uh, eh, I'm going to pass on that one, right? Like I'm not, I don't even know if I want to touch it. I'm on Mark Rogers list of, uh, of whatever you want to call it, sports content creators of people who, you know, bet against, or well, we put out our picks and what have you. And every, if we see, uh, and we had a big one the other week, I forgot who it was. It was like 34 points and I bet against the spread. I don't even, I don't even remember who it was, but I ended up being wrong. Oh, and I was wrong on the Georgia spread too. I thought Arkansas would cover the spread. I was wrong on that. But sometimes it gets so out of hand, right? Uh, I'm afraid to say something. Last two games, I was super confident we lost. I know I know how you feel. I've kind of lost interest in hog football unless, unless they beat Bama, of course, which is highly unlikely now. I've moved fully on to Arkansas basketball. Title contenders, question mark. We'll see. UAPB catches them napping 27 to 24. Whoa. Oh, man. Then Arkansas, that's going to throw a huge wrench into the Sam Pittman, the honeymoon, which is already over, I think. I think it's already over. Not that's, I don't know that that's a, like, what does that even mean, anyways? You hear people talk about that. Is the honeymoon over? What does that even mean? But the, I'll say this, the love that fans have will turn on a coach. I don't care who you are. If you lose to someone like UAPB, it's out the window. Without a doubt. It'll be interesting to see how many fans show up. Yeah. Do they get, do they get north of 45,000? Butch Davis and Arkansas State having a pretty rough year. Yeah, they are. <laughs> we'll see what he does over there. Um. Got to get back to work. Love you. Love your show. Keep up the good work. I do think Arkansas wins 65 to 13, says Leslie. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I'm sticking, I'm sticking with that 50, 52, 13. Okay. I'll tell you the reasons why. Number one, I think Arkansas is going to rest. I, I think they're going to rest early and often. I don't think they're going to keep their ones in. For very long, I think they're going to get three or four score lead, you know, probably 28 nothing something like that and they're you're gonna start to see guys rotate maybe they give up and they've done it every week no matter the opponent uh even though UAPB is bad they're really bad they don't have a whole lot of chunk plays that I saw I don't believe but Arkansas has given them up they've given up big plays I think just about every week going back to Georgia and actually A&M going back to A&M they've given up at least a I think a 40 yard score I could see something like that happening this weekend with the backups in, twos and threes rotating in, and them finding a way to get on the scoreboard a little bit. And it might be late in the game. At that point, it probably is 52 to nothing. And then maybe in the fourth quarter, they, they find a way to, to get on the scoreboard against some of the younger guys. And and why I've only got them 52 on off, from an offensive perspective is because the same reason – uh, you know, and I think UAPB is going to do everything they can to overwhelm the offensive line. I mean, it's going to be hard for them to do, but I can see them trying to, you know, create havoc in the backfield and throwing bodies. And and I don't know, maybe we see KJ stretch it out if that's the case. The RPO can absolutely, uh, and this is why more defenses aren't as aggressive because the RPO can absolutely rip apart blitz heavy defenses. If you've got a quarterback that can make the right reads, uh, I highly recommend you guys go watch quarterback spotlight. 
he did a video, and it's real short on KJ. He only focuses on KJ for maybe uh, for just a little chunk of the video. But I encourage you to go watch it, QB Spotlight. He talks about one of the reads that KJ makes on a play, and we see him do this often. And and this is this is one of the reasons why the RPO has been so successful is because defenses that like to be aggressive get ripped up by this offense. You know, um, by the by that style of play and defenses have learned. You know, we need to back off a little bit. It's why Ken or uh, uh, Barry Odom. He only brings what three or four. When he runs that three front, he'll drop everybody back in coverage, or have guys watch the middle of the field, or have guys watch out in the flats, and they'll swarm. But they don't blitz a lot. And there's a reason why Barry Odom. There's a reason why he had success as a defensive coordinator and in, in everywhere he's been. Uh, and he did that during you know, especially you know, in the early eight days of the of the RPO, and he's been pretty successful against the RPO. I mean, until he came to Arkansas, and now the second half of the season, when they when you kind of feel like they used up all their energy in the first half of the year, now they're banged up, and now the defense feels like they feel like a wet paper bag, right? That's what it feels like. Um, it just finally collapsed; the bottom came out, and uh, but he he had success in a lot of other places against the RPO, and and that was for not being you know when he blitzed, it was timely. Blitzing. It wasn't constant barrage of blitzing, and that's why a lot of defenses don't do it. So we'll see if UAPB takes that approach. If they do, it might get ugly. If they try to, if they try to bring five every down, KJ's good enough. Uh, he'll he'll torch you deep. He'll he'll get you. He'll throw it up to Traylon or uh, Warren Thompson. And you're seeing you're seeing Hudson Henry. Uh, also, hopefully you'll see him this weekend. We saw him last weekend. We're starting to see a little bit more of him. Hopefully we'll see him do uh, you know something similar this weekend and maybe beyond that, right? Maybe he'll do better. Um, Yo, what up, Ty? Have you watched the Halloween, the new Halloween movie? I don't do, I don't do scary movies. I don't do them. Uh. Sorry, Bloodline, your comment was held for review. If we lose the UAPB, I will crap in my... Oh, Lord. I ain't reading that. That's gross. I'm going to eat lunch here in a minute. I can't eat that. I can't read that. Uh, yeah, I don't watch I don't watch scary movies. I don't do them. Now, I will say I watched the new It movie, and it was really damn good. I liked it. Not the sequel, but the first one. It was really good. It scared the crap out of me. I don't do it. I don't do scary movies. I watched. I remember I watched The Grudge when when that come out like twelve years ago. Man, I didn't sleep for like a couple of days. I don't do that stuff. The Ring, don't do it. Hornsby scores his first touchdown. Says Nathan Lair. Uh, the fact that the fact that A and M will be better than us this year gives me heartburn. Maybe, maybe. I wouldn't give up so soon, Tony. Come on, man. Don't just bail out already. We still got some games left, man. Mississippi State is within reach. Alabama not. LSU, you're on the road there. They're playing for their coach, but I still think that game is is within reach. Mizzou, definitely within reach. Don't, don't bail on them. Honeymoon, ask Ordron about a, about a honeymoon. Well, right, but we're not LSU, though. I mean... You know, they, they think they should win titles every year or be in contention every year, and maybe they should be. Arkansas beat a and can't take that dub away from That's right. That is right. I agree. Both Pine Bluffs college and high school teams have only won one game this year. Ooh. Flying Blind says 45-13. to 13. Yeah, see, I, I think that's that's a grounded expectation. Again, you have to consider, and, and I look, I've got them in the 50s, but – I just think they're going to rotate. They're going to do a lot in the rotation. You're going to see twos and threes on both sides. I'd be I'd be surprised if they went beyond like you know, if they push that spread out to like 55, 60 points, right? If Arkansas really but I see this as something that they close they close that gap a little bit like late in the game against Arkansas's third string. Uh Arkansas's lost 3 in a row. And out of the top 25, Arkansas needs all hands on deck regardless of the opponent, right? Missouri's defense is almost John Chavis level bad this year. 
I don't I don't fully agree with that because the first half of the season that defense could play with anybody in the country. That defense could go I think toe to toe with most teams outside of Georgia. Um and then injuries just piled on and I know there's guys playing with more injuries that we don't know about. Again, uh, it's kind of funny now. It's gotten to the point where even people on the radio are talking about it. Like, you know, we don't know exactly who's 110% and who's not, right? Because, or, or who's really healthy or not. Because Sam doesn't really release all that information. And, and he will, like, throughout the week, if you kind of ask him about it, he might get into it and he might dig into it. But even then, you can't trust what he says. Quality depth. We need it. This is Big Donnelly. They uh, they same 10 to 14 guys can't carry the defense. Yeah, you're right about that. And, you know, you're rotating close to, what, seven guys now with the injuries with uh, Utsi and Dorian Gerald out. You're rotating right now. You're rotating about seven, I think seven to eight. Um, But it's it's – it's definitely a quality of depth. It's not just a, it's not a depth issue. It's a quality of your depth. Uh, LSU's missing three or more starters to injury. Yeah, I think it's I think it's like four now. It's kind of crazy. Please tell me Chavis is retired now. I don't know what. I don't know. It's, I remember when he hired on. It was all he bought all this land down in somewhere uh, off maybe off Beaver Lake or something. And I haven't heard from him since. I don't know what he's up to these days. Uh, I guarantee you the LSU game is going to be tough. At least LSU, uh, at least LSU. Oh yeah. He's out. That dude's going to be a top three pick. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. Even if that game were in Fayetteville, I, I'd still be skeptical of a win right now. Like not skeptical, but right now I'm leaning at it just being a coin flip right now. I don't have who, who I think is going to win that game or not. I need to see them a couple more times before they play the Hogs to figure out just where they're at because of the impact of injuries, because of the now publicly known Ed Ordron, you know, the separation that he's having with, with LSU. So how do they respond? You know, do they respond in a really positive manner and just play balls out for their coach? And they're, and they're, they're you know, all of a sudden the lights just flicked on for them. It looks like they're playing pretty decent football. Again, I know they got injuries, but I'm not ready to. I'm not. I don't know. And I don't. I don't like that game, anyways. I, I hate that game. It's another. It's just like the A and M game. Only A and M has caught all the breaks. Just like Auburn. Look at the losing streak you have to them now. Why? Let's go back to that. We can revisit that for a second. Oh, I don't know because of the guys in the black and white, the pinstripes. I'm I'm not putting the last loss fully on the on the officiating, but they have uh, their fair share. I'll say that they'll have they have their fair share of blame for sure. But uh, things just have gone their way, and the same thing with with A and M. I would argue that LSU, Arkansas has has beaten them even when they're clearly not the better team, you know, uh, or they've been in those games where they should have beaten them. I thought last year they were a better team had they had. Uh, their defensive line had they been didn't have the contact tracing issues with COVID on the defensive line. I thought they were good enough to win a year ago. Um, with Burks most likely gone after this year, it'll be interesting to see who steps up in the receiver room next year. Yeah, good news there is you got a lot of guys coming back. They're gonna have Warren Thompson, uh, Keytron Jackson. If you do lose now, Devion Warren, I'm pretty sure is out. Uh, Oh, the walk on. I got kid's name. Tyson Morris. Tyson Morris, I'm pretty sure, is a super senior. You'll have Crawford, the OU transfer. He'll be back. If I hear Belk, Texas, or Liberty, or Liberty Bowl, the word. Oh, I see what you're saying. If if I hear Belk, Texas, or Liberty before the word bowl again, I'm going to lose my mind. Yeah, Tony, I don't know that you're living in the land of reality, my man. Like, dude, the beginning of the year, everyone had Arkansas as lucky to make a bowl game. I'm happy to make a bowl game, and I think that's where most people should be. I think that's a realistic expectation to just be happy you get to a bowl game. It's year two. You go back, even Petrino's second year, 
not so great. Bielema's second year was was a pretty big step in the right direction. Um, but look at the bowl game they played in in year two under Bielema. Like, and also year two under under Petrino, there were some games you should have lost. Like you had some things go your way. And uh, and Petrino could have just as easily not gone to a bowl game his second year. So I, I think we got to put things in perspective. I'm happy they're making a bowl game. That's just extra weeks of, of, of workouts, of, of practice, of getting better, learning how to play together, right? That's just more opportunities for those guys to get better. Yeah, sure. I, I you know I thought for sure eight and four was it. And I've I've backed off off that. I, I don't think they I don't think they get to eight. I don't think they can get there. Like I said, it's there. It's on the table, but it's on the far end of the table. And they gotta they've they've gotta win a couple games they're not expected to win to get there. Now Bama, for me, yeah, you guys know where I'm at with that. Bama they're not beating Bama. Cotton Bowl would be sweet. Is the SEC in the Cotton Bowl anymore? Didn't I see that that's like a Big 12, Big 10 matchup, or have they changed that back? Uh, for real, I'd be happy with the scr- <laughs> I'd be happy with the scrub and bubble toilet bowl. <laughs> yeah, I mean, progress is progress, man, for sure. Kyle Wilkerson says Sam Pittman will be fired next season. Error troll. And you're, there's no way. I mean, first off, in order for that to happen... You'd have to lose this weekend, right? You'd have to lose out. You go into next year being on a red hot seat, which is not going to happen. And then it'd just have to be an absolute abysmal year next year, like two, three wins. Then I could see that happening, but I think the odds of that are not. I don't think that happens. Uh, Cotton Bowl is the – oh, is it? See, I don't even know. How about how about the, the Bourbon Bowl – Go, go mud dogs. <laughs> Gatorade H two O. Sam ain't going anywhere. Hunter's one hundred percent behind him. Yeah, and that's the other thing. He's got a really good relationship with his AD. Um, bu- 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 does Arkansas have a chance this weekend? What, Tony, my man? What are you talking about? Are you clowning? Is that what that is? Are you cl- I hope you're just clowning. I'm going to have to. You're not one to clown, though. So I don't know what you mean by that. Are you really that far off the ledge? You think they're just, it's done and over with? They're that bad? If they Listen, if they lose this weekend, I, I don't know. I, I was going to say, you guys keep pressuring me to shave my beard. It, no, I don't want to do that after a loss. I'll be too mad. But if they lost the UAPB this weekend, I don't know. Um, it ain't going to happen. They're not losing this weekend, man. That wasn't me. I swear that was you. That was Kyle Wilkerson. No, that was you, Tony. Nice try, bro. Kyle said it too, though, didn't he? So both of you. Oh, I see what you're doing. You're responding to his question. My bad. That's my bad. Lay off Tony. That's my bad. I didn't see the... That's my fault. I'm about to get my man Tony jumped. That's my fault. Does Arkansas have... Does Arkansas really have a good chance at winning this weekend? Oh, Kyle. Just... (laughs) Just a troll. Uh, Does anyone know how specific a problem Ed Orgeron had with the university? Does does anyone know what specific problem? Um, Well, there were – you had the the allegations towards the players. I mean, you can can go Google that whole thing. It's a mess. Uh, There were players that were accused of of, – it was pretty bad. Some pretty bad stuff. I'll say that. I don't want to – I don't know how much – I don't know if they're even investigating. I'm, I'm sure the university is doing an internal investigation, but there were some young women who had, I guess, come forward and maybe Ed Orgeron had an email sent to him or something. Regardless, it happened on his watch. He didn't do anything about it. There was that kind of stuff out there. Again, I would encourage you to Google that. Take what I say with a grain of salt there because I'm not – I'll be honest, I haven't spent a whole lot of time on that subject. Uh, it's a shame if it's true. It's disgusting, and he should have been fired 
you know, I don't, I don't know how long they've been doing their internal investigation, but the second there was any kind of, uh, any kind of knowledge that he knew that this was going on and it's verified that it happened to those young ladies from players on his football team, he should have been fired immediately. Of course, we know that's not how LSU operates. Um, there was those kind of rumors floating around. Then there was, there were rumors that he was walking around, you know, or his, his girlfriends were seeing it <laughs> at practice. Now those, I definitely don't, I would, I would encourage you to stay away from message boards on that kind of Intel and just Google it. Cause I have no idea if that's verifiably true, but this is stuff I've heard on the radio. This is stuff that I have read across uh, not just social media, but also boards where I don't take information too serious. But there seems to be a lot of smoke around some of that stuff, around just his antics. Maybe not the girls, his girlfriends or whatever. You know, he's recently divorced. And now that shouldn't have anything. Obviously, that doesn't have anything to do with him being in trouble. But it's the the, the other stuff, right? There, there's a lot of allegations there that he wasn't really uh, – him and the AD weren't on the same page. Um, so also you combine that with last year's, I mean, you saw what happened last year. It wasn't a very good year for them. And then this year didn't start off with a bang. And so I think it's all, it's a combination of, you got to keep winning, right? You got to win. You got to win at a high level, especially at a place like LSU. You know, these big, these big jobs in these big conferences like the SEC, big 10, well, I don't know if I consider the Big 12. I, I mean, you guys know I barely keep up with that conference. Just I know just enough to know that Oklahoma, Oklahoma State might be a good game this year, and that's it. The rest of that conference is blech. But, uh, you know, when you've got – when you're the coach at these big-time jobs, the expectations are extremely high, especially when you've won a title. And uh, so He's underperformed last year and this year, and I guess that's enough. And I think probably combined with some of the other, some of his other antics that have been rumored to be uh, to be going on. I don't know. I've already been hoodwinked over Mike Anderson. Don't do this to me, Ty. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You're right about that. I thought it was Tony too. I thought it was funny though. <laughs> oh man. Kyle Wilkerson says, I'm not a troll. Just see things from a real perspective. You're not speaking from a real perspective if you're arguing that – that are, does if your argument or your question is, does Arkansas have a real chance this weekend? That's not seeing things from a real perspective. That's seeing things from a very pessimistic, troll-like kind of point of view. I don't think Arkansas is good at all. The last four weeks, Arkansas had looked absolutely horrible. Okay, they were one thing going going their way against Ole Miss of winning that game. The Auburn game, all sorts of stuff happened, but regardless, Auburn won. There's a realistic argument to be made that they they should they should have one more win at the very least on their record. They beat a salty. I wouldn't dare say I'm a. I wouldn't say I wouldn't call Texas a, a great team, but maybe a decent or a good team. They beat the crap out of a you know, a decent Texas team, and they beat Texas, A&M, who beat Bama. I, I think those are two pretty decent wins. Um, one of those at a, at a mutual site, one of them at home. I don't think you're, I don't think you're coming from, a, from a, a real perspective at all. If you're saying, if you're asking the question, does Arkansas have a shot against UAPB? That sounds like something a 19-year-old kid would say. Maybe you are. I don't know. Nothing against you if you are, but it's a it's a real pessimistic, kind of childish way of looking at it. Arkansas is favored by 51 points. Now, maybe they don't cover the spread, and I just said they don't. I don't think they do cover a 51-point spread. Maybe it is a little bit closer than it should be this weekend, but Arkansas is outright favored by this game by a ginormous margin. So your framing of that question just came off just not a good take. Uh, so I mean, nothing. And look, maybe you are nineteen. I don't know. Maybe you are, you know, younger, and that's fine. I had some pretty crazy takes too when I was that age, but that's not looking at something from a realistic perspective at all, Kyle. Um. 
Texas A&M is an okay team. Alabama isn't the normal Alabama they normally are. Right, but they're they're riding a a losing streak to Alabama. Say what you want about Bama. They're still – where are they ranked at? I mean, do you think they're at least a legitimate top ten team? Arkansas beat A&M, and we all know if anyone watched that game had K.J. not been injured in the the second half, no doubt they add more points to that lead. And it looks – and I think really what happened was worse than what that score indicates. And you beat a pretty salty A&M team who could very well go maybe 9-3. and I'm probably guessing somewhere like that. They're probably going to win nine games this year. I don't think you're coming from a place – you're not coming from a a real perspective. Don't try to – that's ridiculous. Uh, And by the way, Arkansas – I mean, they don't have the depth, man. They don't have the quality depth that's needed to to contend with this with this schedule. All right, I'm taking this damn beanie off. All right, there we go. My hair is probably a mess. It's itchy, and the thing keeps. There we go. The hair's a mess now. Um, Texas beat the brakes off of OU in the first half. They did, but they did end up losing that game. Max Meister says this man really trying to say we don't have a chance against a team we're favored by 51 against. Exactly. Like that that's not coming from a place of of a realistic perspective. I'm sorry. It might sound crazy, but depending on the recruiting class and if KJ can get even better, the Hogs have somewhat of a chance to win 11 games next year. Well, I'm not going to go that far. I'm not going that far. Uh, Bama is a top 10 team, but definitely not a top. Okay. Regardless, A&M beat them. I'm saying the teams that they have played – Right? Like they can only play who's on their schedule. And they beat Bama. Uh, even Chad Morris didn't lose. Thank you, Cowley. Yeah, the man trying to say. I don't you can have that take, that's fine. But when you say I'm I'm coming from the a, a, a real perspective, no, you're not. That's not a real perspective because nobody has that train of thought. No one in their right mind outside of one other person in this chat (laughs) who I'm pretty sure was just joking. Maybe they're real. I don't know, but uh, no one is making the claim. Anybody who's worth their salt, who's, who's watched these two teams play. And I've watched, watched uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff. They are bad. I'm not saying it's impossible. Just don't think it happens. I really like next year's schedule. Uh, I'd take a winless year to beat Bama just once. This is Grayson. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, I mean, anything's possible on the field. We know that. Anything's possible. You play the game on the field, but Arkansas will should beat the brakes off of UAPB this weekend. Uh, we, start, we start next season off by playing Cincinnati. Red flags. <laughs> yeah. Again, UAPB, one in five. They're coming in with a five-game losing streak. Uh, currently ranked dead last in the Western Division of the SWAC at 0-4 in conference play. So, yeah, I like Arkansas's odds uh, winning. Kyle Wilkerson. Uh, so if Texas A&M beat Bama and Arkansas beat A&M, does that mean Arkansas is better than Bama? No one is making that argument. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No one is making that argument, man. Oh, Lord. All right. Anyways, uh, I want LSU to take a nosedive. Give me the boot. Yeah, I want the I want the boot for sure. I want them to win that game. They should have won that last year. That was embarrassing. Poor officiating, and and you again. You had COVID, and LSU was playing pretty decent football at times. A little inconsistent last year. You got to give him credit. Uh, Kyle, get back to class. Get off your mom's laptop, Kyle. Uh, can't wait for the Bobby Bowl versus Mizzou or uh, Missouri State. Almost said Mizzou State. Missouri State next year. Uh, UAPB beating Arkansas would be like year two. Would be like a oh two year old pounding Mike Tyson in the ground. 
Yeah, hogs are not bad. If you think our, if you think the hogs are bad, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you because I don't think that's the case. I think they're, you know, you come into the season unranked, and then all of a sudden, after a couple of really impressive wins at the time, now you're top ten, and then to only find yourself completely out of the AP top twenty-five just what two three weeks later, it's a little hard for some fans to swallow, and I think some people go over the cliff like our friend Kyle has here. You know, it's a it's a roller coaster ride. Some people, some people can. Uh, can deal with it realistically or just go off the edge entirely. All right. I will see you guys tomorrow on the post game show. I hope to God my, I'm feeling a lot better tomorrow. Ooh. Um, I'm going to go eat me a light sandwich and then, uh, yeah, I hope you guys again, hope you have a good weekend. Enjoy the game tomorrow at 11 AM. Like I said, I've got the hogs winning. What was it? 52? Th- yeah. 52, 13. Um, <laughs> Kelly's just deleting this comment. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Cause now it's just, now it's, it's just pointless at this. It, it's just, uh, we're not going any further with it. Sorry. You lost Kyle. Maybe you can come back to our post game show tomorrow and, and maybe we can have a, another talk about what we just witnessed. All right. 11 AM kickoff tomorrow. We'll be here post game. Looking forward to it. 52, 13, uh, some other good games. I don't have them pulled up in front of me. I think there's a, at least a couple of decent good games. Uh, going into bye week, there are no other 11 a.m. SEC games. Go figure. So uh, we're going to use this opportunity, I think, to get healthy. Hopefully they build off of whatever they do this weekend. If they make any kind of changes, whether it's depth chart, you know, personnel, uh, maybe they uh, they do something uh, a little different. You know, maybe we see some – set plays that are a little different that we haven't seen and they'll take that into the bye week and determine whether or not they want to use them. Another thing we didn't talk about does Arkansas just experiment going back to the four, two going back to the four, two, or do they stick with the three front? I don't think it really matters because of who you're playing, but uh, again, it's going to be interesting to see how they kind of respond on both sides of the ball, how many quarterbacks we see play and how much they play, what the running back rotation is going to look like. Also look at the linebacker positions. I'm curious to see what they do behind bumper pool, uh, Morgan and, and uh, Henry. I, I, you know, I think you're going to see Woodard. I think you're going to see Andrew Parker. There's going to be a couple of guys there that are, uh, that'll probably rotate some names we forgot all about, you know, that get an opportunity to play. Also looking at the safety spots now with Catalan out, Slusher in, who's going to back up Slusher. Uh, what's going? Do we see Devin Bush, big time four star prospect from a couple of years ago, who was in the transfer portal? Do we see him get some playing time? I think so. I think we're going to see some guys we haven't seen. So that'll be that'll be that's good, obviously, for those guys. Maybe build some confidence for guys like Malik Hornsby and Hudson Henry, um, and and uh, have po- whatever positives you can take out of a game like this. Hopefully, you'll have some. And again, we could talk about it in the post game show and on Monday. And again, we're going to talk more basketball next week. I'm just, um, I'm trying to consume as much basketball content as I can. I've been reading, been reading my uh, Lindy's college basketball magazine, been reading what I can find online and talking to some people. Um, so excited about basketball. We're getting there, man. I feel like uh, it's, it's, it's just right in front of us and I can't wait. All right. Woo pig. I'll see you guys tomorrow in the post game show. All right. Okay, go Hawks. At direct service over.